What's going on guys, the Inhuman Beatdown. I am back with more Fate Extra Triple C. Last time we have woken up from our comatose from the prologue, and all the NPCs have different colored hair. We've been told one of two things. Who we can assume is Leo is calling us to the council room, but before that we should head up to the one of the classrooms and meet up with our servant. It was of course none other than Gilgamesh. <clears throat> Ugh, oh, time to get the Gilgamesh voice. Gilgamesh vo Gilgavesh. His name- Gigavesh. Sounds like a Russian person talking. Anyways. <clears throat> when I enter the classroom, it's full of colors of the sunset. Wooden desk, wooden tiles, retro-style window frames. A strange nostalgia grips my heart. This is the year 2030. I'm surrounded by the scenery of a schoolhouse from a bygone era. Like nothing I knew on Earth. Excuse me for a moment. There we go, I had to clear my throat. <clears throat> okay. However, I have no time to lose myself in sentimentality. There's someone waiting for me who scatters such nostalgia, leaving no traces behind. <laughs> what an awful fate! Have you come upon an evil spirit from the netherworld? Are you a criminal awaiting your sentence? Is this the result of your immersion in this... In that tasteless dream. What about it, Vala? Does there remain enough will in that shriveled spirit to give voice to my name? Dun dun. Gilgamesh in all of his glory. Those piercing red eyes. My spine freezes with the coldness of that voice. Indeed, it wasn't a dream. His name is Gilgamesh, the servant I met in that starry sky and forged a contract with before ever laying eyes on him. But... Are you really my servant? That's a strange thing to ask. Of course I am your servant. I am a companion to Vala Izanagi's joys and sorrows. I take the brunt of Vala Izanagi's battles. I shall take pleasure in whatever becomes of Vala Izanagi. If that is not a servant, what is it? Though it is different from the usual contracted relationship. I have not the slightest interest in your ideals or your values. I am merely here to encourage the human being, Vala Izanagi. I will offer you support, but nothing else. Do not make the mistake of considering me your ally. But you need not fear, Vala. Your present position is quite interesting. Here on the far side of the moon, I'll provide you with the power as your servant. You have my word. You would do well to listen to it. I put some life into my body, which is close to just turning and running away, and refocus my gaze on the golden servant. I no longer doubt that he is my servant, but is he really someone I can trust? A master and servant share their fate. The servant represents their master in battle, and the master supplies the necessary magical energy. The relationship is that of, well, a servant and their master. They have an equality born of sharing the same circumstances. If either of them comes up short, sh uh, short, neither of them can participate in the Holy Grail War. For when the servant is defeated, their contracted master loses their power. When a defeated servant is terminated, the master ought not to vanish as well, but in order to supply their servant with all their magical energy, they consequently use up their power and become vulnerable to the enemy's blade. We entrust our lives to our servants, so we have to become allies who guard one another's backs. And on that front, I can't rely on him. I've got no reason to think I can at any rate. Then why did you give your command seals to him? God, you're dumb. As a mark of their readiness to fight together, a contracted servant should show their personal data to their master. But I... This contractor, I haven't been able to see a single one of Gilgamesh's abilities. Oh, very good. Have you finally opened an eye? And are you prepared? 
you look on the king with suspicious eyes. Is there some comment you would like to make? Try it, though you risk your life. His gaze seems to make a slithering sound. All my servant did was look at me coolly. But with just that, the atmosphere groans. A snake raises its head. I feel that in a blink, my own head will be struck from my shoulders. Something like that. It seems I've stepped on a landmine. If I say anything, I die. If I stay silent like this, I die. With my body frozen in fear, I say... Our two options are, I can't think of you as a servant. And there's no way I can trust you. The, uh... The translator makes note that the two, the two ways that they put you or uh, the servant, the character, like Gilgamesh, the top one is much more informal, almost insulting in its manner, while the other one is still kind of rude, but is not as bad. It is not as forceful. The other one is kind of like, I can't think of you as a servant, and the other one is just, I can't trust you. Just thinking of them as a normal person and saying, I can't trust you. The top one will leave us to death. Gilgamesh will literally just strike us down where we stand. So the obvious option is, there is no way I can trust you. If I stay quiet, I'll die. If I raise an objection, I'll be killed. I'm fine like this. So if I die, no matter what I do, I may as well say whatever I want. Let's go, let's go, let's go! I pull together all my body strength put some kick to my trembling throat, and glare at the self-important servant before me. One, two, I cannot trust a person whose true self I don't know. Ho. Oh. Oh. Ho. I just think that's funny. <laughs> I, I said it. My knees are embarrassing, tr are embarrassingly trembling, and my throat went dry at the first word. But in the end, I managed to say what I wanted to. God, I know that feeling all the time during recording this. Ugh. There's a saying in your country. A cornered mouse will bite the cat. No? Uh, Gilgamesh? You realize your hand is going through your arm, right? Seriously, take a moment, look at this. His arm is going through- his hand is going through his arm. Uh, Gilgamesh, you want to get that sorted out? No? Okay, let's go back to the game. Where was I at? Okay, I found it. You have trapped in a corner, even a mouse will challenge its enemy. Very well. I will forgive your gaze. They may be min minimal, but as my master you have some things to- but as my master, you have some things to recommend you. Recommend? Anyways. In any case, you are the fool who sacrificed your three command spells to me without knowing who I was. I wonder if all of your actions will continue to be so amusing. Frustratingly, I can't respond to that. Under the gaze of those red eyes, my animosity gives way to fear. It goes without saying why I'm frightened. This servant is a devil. The instant he decides the other party is useless to him, even if it's his master, he'll cut them down. True story! He actually convinced Kotomine to strike down Tosaka, his master in Fate Zero. All because he thought it was interesting. Because Kotomine interested him, and he hated Tosaka. 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 I don't know, it just... I felt like I was saying it very weirdly. Anyways. Uh, let's see. He'll cut them down. Whoop. Went too far. <laughs> Which is not to say that I will consider your feelings. Your ignorance is astounding, but it appears even you have your reasons. Alright, I will allow you to investigate my identity freely. We know your real name, how hard could it possibly be to find you? Y even you just kind of throw out, it's like, Yep, yeah, fuck it, don't have a title, name's Gilgamesh. Yeah, you should all fear me, gonna kill you. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
Uh, I did see. There we go. When you find time, it would be well for you to search it out. You know my true name. It should be simple to discover my legend. You would think so. Clank, clank, clank. <laughs> my servant walks briskly toward the classroom door. Err, uh, uh, what's this about? You don't understand? I am telling you that if you recognize your ignorance and seek to rectify it, I will overlook your blas blasphemy, then I will allow your bla- I will overlook your blasphemy, then I will allow you your blasphemous proposal. So what are you doing? You must take me with you and begin your investigation. You are the one who declared that you cannot make a decision if you do not know the situation. We have no reason to remain here. It's not my imagination. The golden silver... Uh, golden... I can't read. I can't speak. <laughs> the golden servant Gilgamesh is waiting for me to do something. A smile coming to his lips. Perhaps something in our argument interested him. I unexpectedly came face to face with death, and I find myself rejoicing somehow at this narrow escape from death. However, the situation really hasn't changed, even though I said I wanted to know Gilgamesh's true self. Don't be ridiculous. I have no intention of telling you anything. You must begin by proving yourself. My story will come later. <laughs> Though really, it would be a slim hope indeed to expect you to make it that far. It is enough that the mediocre should, mediocre should run about bustily as they are meant to. Hey, is he really just leaving his master behind and soldering off wherever he pleases? Yeah, he kind of does that. All the time. You object to me walking about freely? We must respect the theory of the Holy Grail War, in which case I should just make myself immaterial. Again, with the main protagonist being silent, having to re-say every question. Now that you mention it, that was the agreement. However, how can you remember that when you have lost the rest of your memories? I just like his voice in Japanese. It sounds very powerful. Astounding. To overturn my expectation in a single minute. What a conscientious and narrow-minded girl you are. I hurry to follow after my servant to ask, no, to propose that he at least refrain from being materialized. Gilgamesh was surprised but he obediently abided by my request and undoes his materialization, transforming to his astral state. Like this, we should be able to satisfy... Sati not satisfy? What the hell am I reading? We should be able to safely move about the school. Speaking of which, I was told to go to the student council room after I had met with Gilgamesh. Oh, but just now, did he perhaps praise me? Actually, no, I think he was astounded by how stupid you could be. Anyways, basically now it's telling me I've got full access to my status, to my statuses, and other shit like that. Of which we can have a look at Gilgamesh. And us. Yay! Also, equipment screen, that hasn't changed. Items. System I can save game. Uh, I don't know how long this is gonna take. Uh, give me a second, let me breeze through the, oh my god, this is going to take quite a bit of time. Anyways, so that looks like, uh, this is where we're going to end things off here. So, next time we'll head to the student council room and meet up with, obviously, Leo, because I've already said it. Because his voice actor didn't change. So until then, I'll catch you all later. Asta. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of Fate Extra Triple C. If you've liked this episode, be sure to leave it a like and share it with all of your friends. And to stay up to date with all my latest content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now it's time to go back into the labyrinth. Fight our way to the other side with the egotistical Gilgamesh at my side and crush all those who would stand in my way. Until next time, I'll catch you all later. Asta!